in this database presentation, I want to talk about how to visualize some data in CartoDB. It's a tool we've talked about in class, but I've not really shown it. So let's have a quick look at the video and how this might work. The first thing I'm going to do is grab a website, a reputable one, a good data set, and I'm going to grab the marine licenses by postcode Queensland. So there they are, marine licenses by type and postcode. Let's bring that data down and bring it down. It's going to create a CSV file with limited. It's already done its thing there, so I'll close down Firefox for the moment. Now, what I'll do is go to Downloads, which is where it downloaded that to, so there's my local directory. Actually, the easiest way to do that is just go to Firefox. Go my Downloads, the most recent ones. I need that one, and I'll open this containing folder, which means it will go straight to it. Now I want to copy that. In fact, I'll cut it. And put it on the desktop. Now, that gives me my data. I'll rename that. Just give it a decent name. Open it up in Excel. Now, comma delimited file is just really just column data. It looks like that. However, there are a couple of really fun, interesting things here. Now, what's going on is I've got some countries down here that I'm not going to want, and further, I've got some um, summary data lines that I don't want. The easiest thing for me to do is grab from the bottom and move up here, because I'm only going to be interested in Queensland. So I'll get rid of these silly ones at the bottom first. Now, up here, I've got 800, 200. Let's go down to where we've got Queensland. I just want to get rid of all the stuff that ain't Queensland. Let's go up to the top. Let's get rid of the threes, the twos, and the postcode of 800, which is actually Northern Territory. We'll delete those rows. I left with four thousands. Go down here until we hit the five thousands or the six thousands. No, there are some five thousands. There we go. Let's go to the bottom of the jar and get rid of those items. Now, I know, because I've looked at this data before, shh, I know that there is a couple of little, there are a couple of little problems I'm going to have with this data. The first thing is I'm going to need to be able to graph or show the count by postcode. Now, the first thing that's going to require me to do is clean up this data. Data, and what I'll do is sort it by count, smallest to largest. So that means that the ones are at the top. Down here, see how we've got these commas? It isn't going to like those commas. When we import into Carto DB, it is not going to like those commas. That should mean that it's a number. If I go into format cells, it says it's a number. But see this thousand separator? When we save it as a CSV file again in a second, that will put commas in and Carter DB will say, oh, that's text. It's not text. We need numbers to be able to show these counts. So what I will do is go to from the bottom to the top, go back into my format cells. I'm going to tell it that I want a number. doesn't have thousand separator, which is what that's doing, but it also don't want count of zero of decimal places. Click OK. That got rid of all of our commas. So in that section there, no more any no more commas. Go to the top again, data sort by count values. No, nope, I want to sort by postcode, smallest to largest. And put it back into the original order. 
Now in this data, we've got a couple of types of marine license code. We've got powered watercraft, we've got um, other sorts. If I go to the top here and just put in a filter and go game, drop, no, for Queensland we've only got PWCLs. That's fine. We will save this data now as CSV. I'm perfectly happy with that. Let's take a look at what this data looks like in comma delimited format. What is a CSV file even looking like? Let's do this. Open it up with notepads. This is raw data underneath. And we can see straight away that we have headings at the top, marine license class, postcode count, type of license, postcode count. And they're just separated by commas all the way down to there. So that's all good. Close that down. Let's take a look at Carto DB. So we'll go to close that. We'll go to Firefox, go to cartodb.com. So cartodb.com. No, what are you? Just cartodb.com. In my case, I log in. I'm happy with that. It's got my credentials in it. You may need to log in with some data that I've used before. But let's take a look at my data sets because I'm going to create a new data set. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this 10 megabyte one here. So I just go into it. And delete this data set. That's okay. Now, really, in Carto DB, there are just a couple of things you need to know. We've got data sets and we have maps. Your data goes into a data set and then you take that and put it onto a map. Maps have layers, layers match to your data sets. So as you create data sets, you will be on your maps, you will need to create layers that marry up to it. First off though, let's pick up our data set. A number of options here that we could use, Google Drive, Dropbox, etc. We're going to use data file. And I could browse, but that's not going to work. So what I will do is just go to the desktop, pick that icon up, drag it down to Firefox, wrap it. Drop it right here. So our 6.16 kilobytes of data. We don't need a lot of data, but just enough to make it all work. Here we go, it's uploading. And close that down and it will be this very first data set. Coming up for me to take a look at. Woohoo, wonderful stuff. Edit my metadata. I'm gonna give that a more meaningful name. Marine Licenses Queensland. I'll put today's date in there. Okay, and if I want to, I can put a description in, probably good practice. Privacy, public or not, this is private data, I'm uh, sorry, public data sets, all good. Here's our data set. The count is there, so the number of licenses per postcode, the type of license class, and here's my postcode. Now, I might find it really difficult to look at this data set in this order. I can rename it. Way to rename this data, go to this little twister down here, and I can rename my column. And I'm just going to, to put it in the right order, force it to have a one in front of it. So marine class count, rename that. I want that to be the third item because it's going to go after the postcode, which is the next thing that I will go over to here and rename it as a two. So one, two, three. So it's now in the right order, just for me to get my head around what I'm looking at here. Now, postcode is a number, count is a number. Postcodes can be strings or numbers. What I'm going to do is use this postcode to tell the map what kind of space I've got. Where does this data located to on the map? So the first thing to do here is I go to my postcode, click on my little drop down, and I'm going to use it as a geo-reference. What that's going to do is going to take 
this postcode, I'll tell it it's looking at postcodes in Australia, and I'll, it will put them in as a polygon over in the geometry line. So this the geom column over here will have a polygon, which is basically a graphical area of where all the postcodes go. Georeference. Now georeference can, can be done for a number of ways. I might have the street address, so that's fine, I've got the full street address. I might have the postcode, which is what I've got in this circumstance. I might have city, and I might have longitude and latitude. So I could actually pinpoint exactly where this thing is. My data might, might look this way. Tell it where my longitude are, where my latitude is. I would have column in my data set for longitude, make it column in the data set for latitude, and that will tell it where to put its little dots on the map. In our case, we're going to do postcodes. Which column are your postcodes stored? That's stored in this two dash postcode. And to make it understand what we're talking about, we know that all the Queensland ones are in Australia, so that's the only place it should look for its polygons. So Australia is in there. Uh, you could, if you had postcodes from around the world, like a zip code for the United States, you could put a, an extra column in that said what country it came from. And marry this up to that. Continue. I can have it give me a data point right in the middle of the postcode, or it can give me the whole area of the postcode. I'll go with the area of the postcode. Here's the geocoding going on down the bottom left hand corner. So it's going through all of these postcodes and converting them to places. 417 rows were geocoded. I'm happy with that. I'll close that dialog down. So a couple of them didn't make it. You can see there row number two, no postcode, no polygon for that one. Actually, not a problem because 4001, for those of you what know, is just for the post boxes in the city. 4009 will be a, another place that they don't have in their database. I could go through, change that postcode to be 4000 or remove it entirely. It might be misleading for my results. Depends on my business question. But for our purposes, we'll leave it alone. Oh, to edit anything in here, if I did want to change that, I double click. On the cell, up comes a little dialog box, change it and save it. In this case, I'll leave it alone. The polygon over here says it knows where my map's going to go. Let's go to the map view. It's analysing it. It's just picked up Queensland. Remember, I got rid of all of the other licences. We're just looking at Queensland. Let's. It reckons it's found an interesting map. I could show that and have a look. I don't believe it's all that interesting. Let's zoom in to our Queensland map. Okay, not much differentiation there. We haven't told it too much. But what I'm going to do is, up here, I can change what format map I'm going to look at. I can have hybrid or dark Nokia. I can have Nokia during the day. I can have another map. It might be satellite, and that can look pretty impressive. If I had data all around the world, I would just go in this case, there's no problem. Go into Brisbane. North, so there's the river. Now, I can do some wizardry. Go over here. We have a layer, so I can add here extra layers and I would tie that to other data sets. So, what I need to do is tell it I can change that orange. Let's say that orange is annoying me. I can click on here and let's make it a lovely shade of blue. It's not really giving me very much information though, is it? Uh, one thing I can tell you though is that pretty clearly this little island in the middle is not a postcode or has no marine licenses in it. This is a simple one. Let's go to um, 
category and we'll change this column to the account and it's giving us a categorical count here by shading not really very meaningful. Let's go to intensity. No, I don't have intensity. What else can I do? Okay, that's a bit more meaningful. There's a choropleth. So choropleth is the darker the color, the more people that I've got in there, as you can see per the key. Uh, but that's just giving us postcode. So it's just telling us big postcodes are in red. Let's go to count. Okay, a bit more meaningful. I can tell you that the smallest, the lightest colored, has 41. Okay, that one's got 159. So there's a couple around here. That one there is 148, slightly darker. So this here should marry up to those color codes. Now, if I go, I want to see what those fields look like. I go to info window over here and start telling it that I want to see some information. So one bit of information I'm going to want to see is the postcode itself and the count. So here we've got 4340, it's got postcode, it's got three in its postcode, it's 95. This one here has 12 and 4360 is the postcode. So that marries much more with what we've got over here. Now, I can change this to be somewhat different. Okay, what look and feel I want. But I'll just leave it with the defaults. I could now, with this data, I can create a whole bunch of pictures that I could export into a app, into a Word document or something. I can use the little pluses and find as I hit Brisbane River. Which what I'll do just so I can see a little bit better. I am going to Postcode. So now I've got the postcode on there so I can see that in my map. Um, 4130, I can see where I'm going. That postcode 4069 has 884 people with licenses, marine licenses, and here 4066 has 333. 512 for 4068. Uh, so that's what we can tell from this data. What we want to do is now we'll try and pick up another data set. Another data set to use might be Southeast Queensland stops. What does that look like? I have a feeling that's got a latitude, longitude. So I'm going to pick that up and just plunk that over the top as a layer. Let's go back to my map. Is not there. Get back to my data set. Can we do that? Do not view. 
So what I need to do now is add another layer. So I've gone back to my map. It was just attached to the data set. I haven't saved it yet, which is what's on the list. Okay, as soon as I want to create another layer, I then need to create a map that will now appear on that list of maps. Let's pick up our data set from SE Stops. Yeah, this is a data set that I've had layered earlier. I'll add the layer. Okay, so what's that giving me? Hmm. Take a look at the wizards. For this layer 2, SEQ stops, I've got a simple layer. And that's fine because for bus stops, this is what matters. So maybe I want to see people who are going to take the boat to work. Um, there are tons of little stops. That's where the buses go out to UQ. And I can see that we end up with. Presumably that's a route, that's a route. Presumably that's Mongol Road. All sorts of bus stops that we can see. So I can then change those bus stops. It's that kind of that simple. I change the cluster. Okay, I can mark that around. This is not my postcode, that won't be a problem. Uh, heat map might be a bit more interesting, so I can change the category. And there's my heat map. So within walking distance of a bus stop, that's what we've got there. And I don't think that's going to produce anything because we don't have enough data to make it really meaningful. But here's a heat map. So I've got, in that visualization, I've got two bits of data overlaid over the top of each other. And I think that's probably sufficient for the purpose of this video. Let's go in though, uh, what I will do, I could animate it here. Watch what happens when I press the play button. So it goes down the data set end to end and adding in all the bus stops. So if you had sequential data, you could do something really nice like that for an assignment. But we are not doing an interactive one. We are doing a simple visualization. So I'll stop that video, only because it's annoying me. Now I could screen capture that, control print screen as I would on Windows. Uh, however, what I can do is let's go back and I'll replot our buses, not as a heat map. Sorry, as a heat map, but not as an animated heat map. And to make it a little bit more meaningful, I'm going to go in a little bit. Like what I might do, leave, take it away from the heat map and leave it just as a simple one. And we will pick up that data there. Now that's not very pretty, I can change it to be less horrid in my eyes by simply making that blue, for instance. And I can do other little bits of information. So platform code. No, that's really all that helpful for our purposes. But I could label it if I wanted to. This could be the location of all of a um, particular store or something. To get the data out, I export the image. I go up here to click on export the image. I can drag this around to show what data I want it to be. Okay, let's assume that's sufficient. And then I will click on this little button here that's hidden quite well, export. Off it goes, it's generating the image. The image has been generated correctly. View the image. There's my picture, lovely file name. I'm going to right click on it, save image as. In my case, I'll save it to the desktop. Um, which is sitting right there. And I'll just give it the name Marine Licenses Catching the Bus. It's a PNG, which is just 
just check the graphic. Oh, well, done. What I'll do now is I will minimize that. Word. So here's Microsoft Word. And go into a blank document. And you may have slightly different word, but insert pictures. Go to the desktop. And marine license is catching the bus. Insert. And that's our graphic. Okay, that's a visualization. It's geospatial. It's got it's got in there bus stops and color coding, and I can do other things, playing around with those various wizards to show how things work. That's a very basic one. There are other options that could be done. But let's leave it at that. I think that's a reasonable place to say we've looked at Carto DB.